Hi Capricorn, welcome to February. This is Teresa from Tarot by T, and before I get started with your reading, I want to call in some good energy and create some sacred space. And I want to say thank you for liking and subscribing to my channel. Thank you for those who have taken time out to leave comments. I love reading all of them. And um, for those who have ordered readings, thank you for your support. I've enjoyed meeting with you and working with you. And for anyone new watching these videos, uh, welcome. And I hope you're enjoying them. So, Capricorn, what's happening? Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> what's happening this month for Capricorn? We have a, a new moon in Aquarius, which is happening in your second house of money and values. And we're having a full moon in Virgo, which is favorable to your sign. And that's going to be on the 19th. The new moon's going to be on the 4th of February. So this is a good month for initiating things, for starting things, for getting yourself out there, for making a dream real. So let's see what's going on in your love life. What is happening for Capricorn in terms of love? What does Capricorn need to know about love and relationships for the month of February 2019? What is coming up for Capricorn? What does Capricorn need to know about love for February 2019? Okay, let's see. The Knight of Cups. The Two of Swords. The Knight of Wands. Nine of Wands, the Queen of Swords, the King of Swords, ah, the Hermit, the Sun, the Four of Cups, and the Hangman. Okay, so you're starting the month off with this Knight of Cups. This is a romantic proposal. So maybe you're, and you have the Two of Swords here, so you might be thinking of um, making a, an, you know, you might be thinking of, um, approaching someone in the month of February, but you're kind of on the fence about it. You have this two of swords here because the Knight of Cups is definitely, you know, an offer of love, a proposal of love. Um, you're thinking romantic thoughts in February. But at the same time, so you might be giving a proposal or receiving an offer of love or an offer of romance in the month of February. The, the crossing card is the Two of Swords. This is a card of being on the fence. Um, two people who might not be communicating right now because each person is waiting for the other person to make the first move. So one of you has to break the ice. You have to start, you have to try to be more vulnerable and drop your guard. And don't be so afraid of rejection in the month of February because you might be afraid to reach out to someone thinking that, you know, you just don't know how they feel. You don't want to take that risk. Um, but this is a card of at some point you have to decide. You have to get off the fence. It's like you're afraid to take that action, to make that move. I just feel like reticence, you know. In the past, you have the Knight of Wands and the Nine of Wands. So you might have been involved with someone in the past that was very, not so reliable. A lot of fun, um, but they made a lot of promises they didn't deliver. And you might have even um, reconnected with them at some point. There could even be someone from the past coming back to reconnect or wanting to um, reestablish a partnership. Maybe one of you moved away, moved, changed jobs, changed locations. Um, the Knight of Wands is someone that's looking for adventure. They get bored very easily and they're always looking for the next thing that's exciting. So you might have been dealing with someone who was... Um, kind of unstable, not wanting to stay in the same place long, not wanting to stay in the same relationship for a long time. 
and um, you spend a lot of time and a lot of energy trying to make this relationship work. And I feel like you're getting to the point where you're ready to give up and move on. If you're, if you're with someone who is not really giving you what you need, you might be thinking about moving on. Uh, maybe you're even thinking about moving yourself, you know, to a new location. Or thinking like, you know, you're looking for adventure. It's like your life has gotten too routine. And you're thinking, well, maybe I should start looking at what my options are and start exploring some of those options. Because I, but I think that, you know, and then you have the Queen of Swords coming up in the future and the King of Swords. So this is like a, this is a soulmate connection. This is a, these two are compatible. So you, you're either dealing with, you could be dealing with um, an air sign. And that could be Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. In the past, you might have been dealing with fire signs. And um, now you're kind of, you might be dealing with air signs in the future. But even if that's not the case, the personality, I go with, I, you know, the cards, the suits represent certain signs. But sometimes I like to go by personalities because people, you know, you might know their sun sign, but you don't know their moon or their rising sign. And they can have those qualities. So you could be dealing with a, an air sign that has like Leo rising or you could be dealing with a fire sign that has Libra moon or something. So the personality of the Knight of Wands is someone who is restless and a lot of fun, fat, you know, um, but not very, you can't always count on them. They're not always going to be there for you. So that was what you experienced in the past. And it was, you might have struggled with that. You know, how do I deal with this energy? Because I want stability. I want, you know, Capricorn wants commitment. Capricorn wants something, wants to know that you're going to be there for them. They want to be able to trust you. They have trust issues sometimes. So that experience that is fading has made you like the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords has been through a lot of heartache and she has built this wall up around her where she's become very independent. You're used to taking care of yourself. You're not used to needing anyone or relying on anyone. You know, you're just doing your thing because Capricorn is very good with responsibility. You're very responsible. You know, no one has to ask you to take care of things. Capricorn takes care of things. Capricorn is dependable, organized, you know, ambitious. So you've been existing in this world of solitude, kind of, because you have this hermit here. It's like you've been alone for a while. And you're not really reaching out to anyone. You're just being alone and doing some soul searching, thinking about your life and but you're not taking action. You're just contemplating. And maybe you need to drop your guard in February a little bit. Be a little bit more open. Because you have this King of Swords in your near future. So there is someone who's interested, who's thinking about you as well. But this person's trying to make the right decision. He's trying to decide between what's real and what's not real. Trying to make decisions based on logic. This person's a thinker, not a feeler. So they don't, you know, where some people make decisions based on their emotions. You know, I feel that I need to do this and I just have a feeling and I've got to follow my feeling. The air signs do not. They don't go by feeling. They go by logic. So this person's thinking, you know, they probably, of all the um, connections and all, they're analyzing every angle, like, before they take action. But they are thinking. They're thinking of the past, they're remembering a connection, um, and they're contemplating reaching out. But you have to, you might have to meet them halfway. You might have to drop your guard and communicate how you feel to let this connection happen. Because it, when if it does happen, there could be, um, compatibility because you're both similar you have the two the queen and the king here so um, maybe you're both in that mode of 
being independent. You know, somebody's got to give. Somebody's got to, you know, break the ice. But I feel like someone from the past wants to come back into your life. Someone who's been away. And you have to think about, you're thinking about, do I want to take this person? Do I want to connect with this person? Do I want to have a relationship with this person? And so you're doing a lot of thinking in February and soul searching, you know, trying to figure out what's right for you. Now you have the sun here in your environment. This means that if you do decide to connect with this king of, of swords, um, you could have a good relationship. You could have fun together. This is a card of two people really enjoying being together and having fun when they're together. You know, get away from the seriousness of life and take some time out and have some fun. The sun is a very good card for overcoming any problems in the, in the uh, reading. And you have the four of cups here. So definitely someone is offering something to you, but you're on the fence about it. Like this, you know that something is there for you, but you're not willing to reach out for that cup. You're, you're on the fence thinking, I don't know, do I really want this cup? Should I reach out for this cup? What is this cup going to bring me? Is it going to bring me something good? Or am I going to be, you know, experience heartache? You know, because in the... So you can't judge the future by the past. Like, don't let the future relationship suffer or pay the price for someone else's sin. You know, if you were hurt in the past, that doesn't mean that the next person is going to do the same thing. So that could be holding you back, the fear of, you know, going through a similar experience. But I think things might be different. You've got the sun here. I think you have a good connection potential. You just have to reach out for it. You have to accept it. You have to take it, take action. You have to drink from the cup. And then you have the hangman. That's another card of being in limbo. It's a card of giving something up for something better. Um... But it feels like a sacrifice because a part of you doesn't want to give up the present situation. So I don't know if you're in a relationship that's maybe not working, but you're not ready to leave it. Um, or you're just afraid to start something new because you remember what you went through in the past with this unreliable person, with this flighty person. Um, and you've been through the mill with the Nine of Wands. You've been struggling for a long time trying to, you know, make a relationship work. And um, so now this new offer comes in. And it's not so much a new offer. I feel like it's it's connected to the past. Like you might reconnect with someone from the past and there's like feelings there. And you have the option. Do I pursue this or not? Do I give up what I have and accept this new offer? Or do I keep what I have and keep struggling with this nine of wands? Keep fighting for, you know, for harmony. So you have some decisions to make in February, Capricorn. But my feeling is, and you have to give it a lot of thought. You have to, the, the way to make the right decision is to really sit back and think, what do I need in a relationship? What do I need to make to be happy? What kind of person would be, be my best fit? You know, what's a, what's a good match for me? What kind of qualities am I wanting in a relationship, in a person? And that's this King of Swords. He's trying to separate what's real from what's not real. He doesn't want fantasy. He wants something that's real. And, you know, before you can decide what you want, you have to know what you want before you can get it. You know, you have to... Sit down and really think, you know, make the list, pros, cons, I want this, I want that, you know. And who's going to give it to me? Who's going to give me, who is the best choice to give me what I need? And once you decide what you want, then you can move forward and claim it. But the potential is there for joy and love and fun and abundance. You know, the sun card means no matter what you've been through, you know, you've been if you've been through a dark time or a difficult time, the sun is coming out. The sun wants to break free from the clouds. But you have to help it along. You have to make that decision. You have to you have to choose that path that's going to lead to the sun. 
So let's see what the um, stars have to say. So you have a new moon in the second house on February 4th. And it's supported by Jupiter in the 12th house. So, and you have Saturn in the first. This is You have Saturn, Pluto, and Venus in their first house. So you're looking good in February because when Venus is in your first house, you attract love, uh, especially when it crosses your ascendant. Um, there's a good chance that there could be some type of partnership on the horizon. And the problem is here with the two, the second house, you have a new beginning in your second house. That means um, the issue is going to be not only just money, you know, am I getting paid what, I work, what I'm worth? Do I need to look for another job that pays more money? How can I bring more money into my life? But what am I worth and what do I value? That's where the beginning is. You have to start thinking in new ways of what do I deserve from life? And am I claiming Am I settling for less than I deserve? Or am I claiming what I deserve? Am I going, you know, after what I need or what I want or what I, you know, don't settle. Don't settle for less. You have this new beginning to claim something of value. And Jupiter's supporting you to help get rid of, because it's in the 12th house, all the blocks, the negative self-talk, the gremlins, the demons, Whatever is blocking you, whatever is stopping you from abundance and joy, Jupiter can help clear that out. And you've got Neptune. Neptune's in the third house. So this is a very creative time for you. You could be, if you're working on any kind of creative project or communications project, words will just be like magic. They'll, they'll, I mean, this is a great time to write compose music art whatever anything creative that involves communication communicating how you feel um, the best way to use neptune energy is through some type of creative project because if if it's not if it has to do with contracts which is also a third house thing then you have to watch for deception you know so if you're going to sign any contracts in february and it has nothing to do with art or music or creativity then you need to look at the fine print and make sure you're getting that you're understanding what you're signing up for. Uranus is going to be moving into your fourth house. It's, well, it's been in your fourth house in Aries. It's going to be moving out of Aries soon into Taurus, but right now it's in your fourth house, so it's been shaking up your home life. Um, you may feel like moving or renovating your house, it's making it fresh, making it new. Um, Chiron's in your third house at this new moon. So there could be, maybe you need to have a healing conversation with someone. Maybe you need to reconnect with people that you consider family. Uh, relatives, cousins, brothers, sisters. And heal some of those wounds so that you feel that you have support. That you're not in life by yourself, doing this all by yourself. Um, there is support there for you, but you have to reach out for it. So the full moon... The full moon is happening in your ninth house and your third house. So you could be um, finishing up some type of educational project. Maybe you're, if you've gone back to school, maybe you're finishing up a program of study. Or you could be finishing some kind of um, communications project like a website or media advertising program. You could be even teaching. You could be deciding to teach some of your wisdom, teach of some of the things that you've learned. Or you could decide to travel. Um, the ninth house has to do with higher education, travel, learning, teaching. Maybe you're thinking like, I need to go on vacation. I need to go visit some people. Maybe you want to go see some relatives who are at a distance. Mars is in your fifth house in February at this full moon. And it's trining the full moon. So there could be love. It could bring love with someone who's very different than you. Different culture, different belief system. Um, so you might be sharing ideas with someone who helps you to see things from a different perspective. Um, again, Mercury and Neptune are, are conjunct in the third house. Um, so you want to make sure that 
you're communicating clearly. If you have to explain yourself, if you're giving a speech or you're um, presenting something to an audience, you want to come across, um, you don't want to be kind of, you want to be clear. You don't want to, you want to get your message out in a clear way. So make sure that you are being understood, that, you're, that, that your message is, is clear. Because Neptune can bring confusion when it comes to communication. Um, Venus and Saturn and Pluto, man, you have intense energy right now in your first house. You are changing on deep levels. You're coming into your power. You're learning about responsibility. You're learning how to take to be a leader. And you're also, Venus is bringing... You're looking very attractive to the world. You're attracting love and money and power and responsibility. You're attracting so many things with, with your first house full of all these planets. Um, so utilize this energy, especially this month. And Mars is giving you the energy to take action. It's giving you the courage to take action. And it's in your fifth house. So maybe you're the one who needs to take action this month. Don't wait for things to happen. Be the agent of change. Because I feel like there's love out there waiting for you, but you have to open the door or you have to knock on someone's door. You know, you have to take, make, maybe make the first move or make that proposal. And then you're going to see things start to happen. Um, and it may mean moving out of your comfort zone a little bit, but the reward will be great. Look at the sun. This, this could be the answer to whatever, you know, your loneliness or your dark times can be over with this sun card. So um, don't be afraid to take action. Give it some thought, figure out what you want, and go for it. So that's my reading for the uh, month of February Capricorn. I hope you've enjoyed this reading. If you'd like to have a um, private reading, just click on the link in the description box, and we can get you on the schedule, and uh, I'd love to work with you. In the meantime, um, think carefully about what you want and then go for it in the month of February. Because this is a month of, you know, all the planets are going direct and many of the planets are in their home sign. Saturn's in Capricorn, Neptune's in Pisces, Jupiter's in Sagittarius. I mean, you've got a lot of strong planetary energy helping you to achieve a goal or a dream. So don't, don't lose out on this opportunity. Take that chance. Go for that dream. And um, I hope you enjoy February. I hope it's very successful. I hope it's filled with love and joy. And I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now. <laughs>